Okay. All right. This is we're in the game. Okay, so hello guys. Welcome to Let's Play Donkey Kong 64 with me, Bogoblin Gamer. And yeah. <laughs> 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 Woo! Woo! And his and and uh, and Diddy Kong, the yeah, real it's the me. real Diddy Kong. Ook ook. Uh, yeah, Tim. If you didn't know that, probably says yeah. in the title um, of the bunch. So yeah, here's the DK rap, which is probably. I mean, this is this game's legacy, as far as I'm concerned. It's the only thing about this game that I know about. It, it, it is absolutely marvelous. I think it's just wonderful. So we're going to watch the whole thing. <laughs> You're going to watch it with no sound. But I'm going to talk over it because we've got some stuff to talk about. So yeah. yeah, Tim hasn't played Donkey Kong before. I think you played it once in a stream on emulator and it went all fucking. Yeah, it crashed. <laughs> which is what it does. Which is. Uh, I played it for about 15 minutes. Yeah, so uh, I I played it a bit on an emulator yesterday to see if I could do that because I thought it might be fixed by now because it's been like this for a while. No, I mean, it's, it's still fucky. It's still really really fucky. I feel like we've done more impressive things with technology, but I mean I'm sure if this, if people put their mind to it then. Then they could fix it, but nobody wants to. Apparently, maybe I should. Do I feel it. like all of the people who are as like who are like properly dedicated to this game enough to ha like want to take all the time to fix the ROM for it, they probably already own it, so like it doesn't matter. Well, to them. no, because the thing is, any like speed runs and stuff. This game is like incredibly annoying because it has a very aggressive autosave. Mm. Uh, basically, it saves every time you collect anything. Oh, you don't okay. notice it; doesn't like fuck with the game or anything. But you know, if you if you want to try something more than once, then you can't because yeah. it saves. Hmm. So if you were doing a speedrun of this game, it would be very advantageous to actually get it working properly on an emulator because you'd be able to fix that problem. It also is yeah. going to make it a pain in the ass to let's play because if I screw up something, like I forget to hit record or similar, mm -hmm. then <laughs> then if I do like an episode it'll just save so I can't like redo the episode so I've got to be really careful hmm. oh, this uh, is a it's this pretty is a long long song which I mean it is long but it, it deserves to be you know it's not well, it, it's doesn't, an event. It, it doesn't like f yeah it's not long for the sake of it it's an actual rap Hip hop. This was the uh yeah, you gotta have all the features. Yes, you gotta have all of the features. Well it's like uh, you know, this was the first uh foray into 3D Donkey goodness. Yeah, it was the first 3D Donkey Kong. So they had to make it a big so, event. Which of these games gonna get rid of game one? I mean it doesn't actually matter. Let's erase game one, why not, I don't give a shit. Yes, I'm very sure. Empty. Alright. So what kind of uh <laughs> what kind of game are you gonna be playing of this? Are you gonna try to be getting all the bullshit or just doing a normal game? I might. I'm not actually sure yet. Cause this game Cause has I, a lot one of thing shit. I, yeah, one thing I do know about this game is that it's quite heavy on the collecting. It's very heavy on the collecting and it's uh, in in such a way, I mean, there are there is stuff in this game that I've never done, which doesn't preclude mm -hmm. me from doing it in this LP. Mm -hmm. But it just means that it might be a bit tricky. Yeah. Um, for instance, 
there's a Donkey Kong arcade game, which is incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. Which you have to do twice. Oh my. Oh, like playing the original Donkey Kong? Yeah, it's Kong. like the original Donkey Kong. Oh, yeah. You have to do that twice. There's also a really annoying minigame called Beaver Bother, which appears in multiple levels, but in the last level there's two of them, and they're incredibly hard, and I haven't done either of them. They're not... well, yeah, they're hard in just a, such a frustrating way. Um, for anyone who's not aware, I actually have a video on my channel that's about two hours of footage of doing Beaver Bother. I decided to record it oh while I was shit. playing it last time, because last time I did it, I played it like I'm playing it now, through my capture device on the computer. That's a fucking bunch. But yeah, it's it's a bunch of time. I've never seen this cutscene because the emulator crashed about two seconds into it when I played this. Oh, nice. So did you have to, like, skip it to actually yeah. play the game? Epic. I didn't get the deep lore. You didn't get the deep lore. The, the lore is extremely deep. Actual voice acting. I know you can't oh, wow. hear it because. Well, I can imagine it. Yeah, you can imagine it. It's pretty good. I feel like, uh, you know, if they went to all the trouble recording the DK rap, they, you know, oh, regular yeah. voice yeah. acting wasn't much of an undertaking. But, uh, for the time, pretty crazy. Actual voices in a Donkey Kong game. These are the yeah. Kremlins, these bad boys operating the machine. <laughs> They're like motorcycle jackets on. Oh, is that the thing? <laughs> They're Kremlins. And King K. Rool is the big Kremlin who has got the crown on. And he yeah. has a ship that's really top heavy and they crash it into this tiny rock next to DK Island. This game is just is just wacky. It's wacky. It's just a zany yeah, that water texture. Nutty. Um, it's a wacky game. Uh, what like, a, what are there, what are some other? Uh, it's a it's uh, a d charming words for charming fun. words for fun. Goofy thing. Goofy, yeah. Um, pants on head, retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say tongue in cheek, but that's spe very specific. It's no, a, it's no, a little bit tongue in cheek, but not really. I, I mean, suppose. it kind of not that Donkey Kong ever like took itself seriously. No, no, but it, you know, yeah. We haven't gotten our it's dark, it. gritty Donkey Kong game yet. No, I'm looking forward to the Donkey Kong reboot. Yeah, Darky Kong, which is like a photorealistic. Monkey. I don't think they would call it Darky Kong because they could very easily be called Dark like... Darky Kong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the uh, it's like the toothpaste called Darky. The toothpaste that's called Darky oh, yeah. is that real? There's a toothpaste called Darky, and the way I found out about it is because it has its own Wikipedia page that is listed on the Wikipedia page list of unusual Wikipedia articles. Right. So. That Wikipedia That's list. It's just a wealth of fun. If you yeah. heard a very loud noise, it's because I uh, banged the desk that my microphone is sitting on with my knee. Nice. Now. Yeah. Um. All right. So here we go. His Donkey Kong in his house, and we're gonna actually get to play the game soon. This oh, is he's good. He's listening to some hot tunes on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and a parrot comes good. in and plays orchestral tunes. I've noticed that Rare has an affinity for uh, their animal characters having very, like, comfy homes. With hammocks. Yeah, they got hammocks. This home Banjo's has... got a nice little... Yeah, like woody house. And, I think it's uh, it sort of represents does. like being free. Like uh, in the Jungle Book, um, Baloo had a hammock, didn't he? So yeah, there's there's just something very uh, of the land. It, yeah, it's very of the sort of jungle. Like if you were sort of jungly, if you lived in the jungle, I think I, I don't even give a, a fuck so much that I don't even have a bed. 
Well, they can't, like, build a mattress. I'm sure they could, if they could build that machine. I'm sure an animal could figure out how to make a mattress. Yeah, probably, right. I'm sure So, okay, Kong me and, uh... Build a mattress. Me and Walter are doing a Let's Play of Donkey Kong Country currently. Yeah, so this is like a tie-in. Yeah, and I wanted to bring it up not just to be a plug, but also because I have a question about Donkey Kong lore. Right. Um, are the bananas supposed to be, in, in Donkey Kong's view, like currency or food? Because I feel like if it's food, I think Donkey Kong is being a bit excessive with how much he demands is returned to him. Right. But if it's like his life savings, then I understand. Okay, well, this game sort of rectifies that, actually, because bananas are food. They also get used to unlock things, but the, the, whatever. Actually, yeah, no, because yeah. the, the Kongs eat melons to gain health, so I actually don't think that the monkeys eat bananas at all. They just have okay. them. I don't think they've figured out how to peel them. So maybe they are currency. So yeah, so they're, they're yeah. just currency, but they also. I mean, the but in this game, you also have of... golden bananas, yeah. Okay. Because the golden bananas kind of. I believe, from what I know about this game, that they kind of operate the same way that, like, stars in the 3D Mario yeah, games they're, do. Yeah, they're, they're uh, banana, banana shaped stars. They're your banana key to the. To the kingdom. To the banana lock. What did Cranky mean about training? So yeah, so Cranky wants you to train, because, um, yeah, I was playing this bit the other day just to get a feel for it, and actually, um, yeah, it's, it's Cranky, I don't think Donkey Kong quite understands what has happened yet. Mm. <laughs> that all his friends are gone, and he's like, what, what does he mean about training? I should note for the people watching that I'm watching this on a stream and I'm about like 10 seconds behind. So. Yeah, I don't think you're that far behind. We're on the swimming mini game now. Because Smash Cast is a little bit better than yet. Twitch. Wow, okay. Uh, it is beginning. Okay, this is longer than I thought. And okay. you're reading the instructions now for me. Alright. An idea of where I am. Okay, well I might have to uh, stop if I see something that's funny. But yeah, basically this is just showing you all the moves, how to play the game. Uh, we're gonna throw oranges here, which are bombs, which are pretty sick. Yeah, this is the part that crashed for me. Right, yeah. When I tried to play it. You take your oranges and then you throw them. Ugh. Yeah! Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well done. Great. What uh? What Great. control are you playing this with? What control am I playing? This is, I'm playing with this with my my Maco Pad 64, which is oh. a third-party N64 controller that isn't shit. Oh, because I was just about to say I hate the N64 controller. Oh yeah, of course. I do too. I really don't know why they made it the way they did. Uh, I like playing N64 games. One of my roommates has a Nintendo 64, so I sometimes get to play them on a real console. But I hate using the controller. It's not nice. It's it's so strange. Mm -hmm. um, just that the, the whole tri-wing thing is just really fucking weird. I don't, yeah, I don't I have whole, no like, idea what they were thinking. I don't know how to explain the physicality of it, but there's something about the joystick that just is not good. No, the joystick is really kind of nasty. It's like pointed rather than on a ball. Yeah. Um, the way the joystick works technically is actually really fucky as well. So, the way joysticks work in most controllers, you know, sane controllers, is that they have like a sort of resistor that adjusts when you move it. But mm -hmm. in the N64 controller, basically, there's like an infrared light that shines through a little bit in the controller, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it basically, and the controller has like sort of shutters in it. 
so when you move it, it's, it just counts how far you've moved the control stick, and I'm honestly surprised that it works so well, because it sounds like just such a hack. Yeah. I don't, it's very, very strange. I mean, I'm sure they had to do it like that for technical reasons, because, um, well, you know, technical reasons and everything. Because like, you, know. you wouldn't want to do it like that. It's fucking bad. Well, I mean, I, I don't think any any problem with past consoles was them going like this no, is no yeah we we want the this, best way this is, you could this ever is great. play great no games. they they you know they had to work with what they had so we just got the ground pound or the simian slam as it's called in this game it's pretty good you can use it to open the door which we're going to do I'm not actually sure if this is the right way this area is like surprisingly confusing i think this is the wrong way but i want to go the wrong way cuz there's banana coins there I do need to come back here later for more banana coins, but yeah. Why can't you have to drink a potion to get the ability to smash your ass onto the ground? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, gotta drink that <laughs> butt, butt juice. <laughs> <laughs> gotta make my, uh, my ass more powerful. With my anal yeah. power juice. And, and the, the, the best part is there's like more butt juice later on that makes you oh, better. Right. And then there's one again. <laughs> there's three butt juices. Wow. This being a rare game, I'm surprised it's not called butt juice in the game. Yeah. Well, apparently it tastes really bad and smells really bad because he does the animation. It's fucking poopy. So, yeah. To do with the According to uh, Rowan Atkinson over here, the, there's only one entrance that we can go in. That's very convenient. Oh, whoa. I'm looking at the at a picture of the Maco pad. This looks much better. This looks much more usable. Yeah, it certainly is. Is it, uh, is it usable with the actual N64? I'm yeah, assuming? yeah. It's just an N64 controller. It's quite nice. It's kind of weird still. It's not quite yeah. how I would design it, but well, yeah, it is. It is odd looking. But uh, it's definitely better than the N64 controller by a long shot. It's also clear, which is a sort of funny remnant of time. We don't really get that anymore. But it's cool that you can actually yeah. see the inside of the controller. I I don't think you don't think about it, but. You know, now that you mention it, I haven't seen a clear controller since like the early 2000s. Yeah, it was like a thing to do, and you could put like lights in it, like blue LED lights. So People this... thought that was cool as shit then. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's still pretty cool. So this is K Um Every time we get, we beat a level, we beat the boss in the level. Yes, Donkey will help K Lumsy. Every time we beat a boss in the level. We get a key. There are eight keys, and once you get all of the keys, then he comes out and does something to make you uh, win the game. Oh, okay. He there sure are a the lot of uh, area. get stuff. Yeah, the, the, I, I, as, as I say, there's a lot of get stuff to make make the thing go. Yeah. I think there's something like 3,500. Collectibles in this game, I think I read. Jesus. Uh, which is quite bonkers. Obviously, some of them are more. There's more of them than others. Plentiful. But, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there's like 500 bananas in every level. There's, uh, there's 201 golden bananas. There's like the fairy things. There's, there's a lot. Hmm. There's I don't know what it is. I don't know if it has to do with how their eyes are shaped, but fucking enemies in rare games always look like they're like victims. They look like they're screaming all the time to me. Yeah. They don't look bewildered and upset. No, I mean, the, like, that beaver I just killed that you'll see in, like, 20 seconds or whatever. Yeah. Uh, 
It's just, it's just there. Like he's not one of King Cable's minions. <laughs> he's just on the island. He's a beaver. Yeah. So is, is uh the fucking guy that you need bananas to get into. So we have one you really, banana. You really weren't off of that estimate of how long it would be because I just saw that shit. Wow. Okay. All right. Anyway, we now, also have to keep in mind that I'm literally across the ocean from you. You are quite a while away. Maybe I should stream to like the uh, fucking Tim's house server that's in your house. Yeah, that one. <laughs> the Smashcast TV server that you host. Yeah. Instead of the London one. <clears throat> I don't know. It's like, do I want it to be miserable for me or miserable for you? It's... I mean, it's not miserable. It's, no, I know. Yeah, I'm just, uh... I'm just being hyperbolous. Yeah, yeah. Which is a brand new word I made up. Hyperbolous? So is he there, or is this a screen? Yeah, no, it's really weird. I wanted to talk about that earlier. It's sort of conceptual. So, like, <laughs> he has, like real Donkey Kongs, but they're not actually them. They're like clones that sort of represent <laughs> them. It's, it's what he's strange. Able to do. Yeah, I don't know if they're like... <laughs> That's weird. It's fucking strange. Do you think he like... like murders them to imagine destroying Donkey Kong so he can like get off to it? Yeah, maybe. I like, mean, he... it's like maybe it's like voodoo dolls, except without the part that makes. Yeah, it is kind of like voodoo dolls, but they're like reverse voodoo dolls. Like the things yeah. that the Kongs do in real life influences how the voodoo dolls act, which is yeah. really fucking strange. I don't really understand it, but I suppose it's a like it's not even like a screen or a simulation. I just fuck that up, and I have to do that all over again. Yeah, I have to swing on the vine so that I can open the rest of the level. I was uh, just sent a uh, gif. Funny of gif. A, uh, of someone in The Sims 3 cooking a baby. <laughs> oh god. Putting a baby on the grill. Put another baby on the Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. B baby Q. The old classic baby. Hot baby. I learned uh, a what a baby back rib actually is, and b right. why most of the time it's not actually a baby back. Rib. Right. They just pretend. They're just back ribs. Right. Well, what is a baby back rib? It's the meat. Uh, if I rem if I, you know, was told correctly, it's the meat around the spine of the pig. Right. That's and strange. when they, I guess, when the term was invented, they did it for like baby pigs. Right. But I guess the idea of tearing out the spines of infant pigs was too much, even for carnivores. Even like for me. the meat industry. Yeah, so they were like, let's still call it that, so you can still imagine baby pigs dying. Yeah. But we're not gonna but do it. But it's guilt free, because we only killed adult pigs. Yeah. We waited them to be at least like six years old. I mean, we kind of, you know, value uh, kid life over adult life for humans as well, so I guess it only makes sense that we would do it for what we eat. Mm. You know, if, if a kid dies, it's like, oh shit, but if an adult dies, it's like, it's like well, yeah, yeah. That, that happens. Yeah. You know. it, I mean, kids shouldn't die. Yeah. Adults have to. Eventually, it's an adult yeah. has to. This is what uh, Donkey Kong 64 is all about. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is our intellectual discussion on Donkey Kong. Yeah, well, we're gonna have a deep philosophical discussion about death All right. during Donkey yeah. Kong. Yeah, speaking of death, 
Donkey Kong just got a fucking gun. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know how to put. I need. To, I know how to take out my gun. I think. What if you had a gun? All right. What if I had a gun? So yeah, I just got a gun, and we're gonna go test it out on a load of beavers and stuff. Jesus. In in this arena, that's in the sky. Which? Oh, you're just in the sky. Oh my god! Can't wait for you to see that. That was fucking stupid. I'll look. I'll keep my eye out for yeah, something stupid. Yeah. Keep your eye out for something stupid. All right. So here's Beaver Brawl. This isn't Beaver Bother, the thing, the annoying thing. This is an easy thing. Yeah. I think I wouldn't do this early in the game. Yeah. It's not too late in the game. I think there might be one in... I'm not sure if there's one in the first level, but there might be one in the second level. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I just... Don't even went off the side. So yeah, you just have to kill a bunch of beavers, and then when you do, you collect a crown. <laughs> a crown is another type of collectible, which oh, Jesus. <laughs> which can be used for something. I can't remember even what. It lets you get into the king. Yeah, it lets you get to get into the king club. Yeah, you get to be king. King of the crowns. King of the crowns. So yeah. No, oh, look, there's just a golden banana lion here. And there's Diddy Kong, he's in a cage. You might Shots. need Funky's help to get me out of this one. And then, as soon as he talks to you, some coconut switches appear. <laughs> Which are on top of doors, but don't activate those doors. Oh, so you have to you have to stand on a switch to do the gun? No, no, you just have to shoot. You have to shoot the switch. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Uh, this is Snide's HQ, which we won't be going to yet because we got to collect blueprints for that, which are another collectible. <laughs> I don't even know how the people who made the game. Like kept track of this shit. I think they had a couple of spreadsheets. I I really think they were like they had a bunch of ideas for like okay what's gonna be the big collectible thing, and then they just had a lot of ideas. That yeah, they it's like well we want to have like a smaller collectible you know like the coins of the game so that's the bananas and then they're like well what if there's a uh, more things. <laughs> or maybe they just came up with all these different, uh, you know, gameplay concepts. Not gameplay, because it's all collecting, but, you know, things that the collecting scenarios that you get via collecting things, and they were like, oh god, we have to come up with a bunch of different ways to make this shit happen, because... It would just be stupid if all, all you just had to get enough golden bananas for all this to work. Yeah. No, I like that. I honestly, I like it. I like that there's a lot of stuff to get. I'm a numbers man. Maybe. Yeah. I'm like fucky like that, but I really don't think that it's a big deal that there's lots of collectibles. I think it's funny that there's so many. Yeah. No, I just, but it is just kind adds, of like obnoxious how many there it, are. It adds interest to the game. But I really I, like this I game, too, but a lot I of people I too don't. enjoy, uh, I enjoy myself some, some collectible things in games. And I, I also enjoy games that, where I, I get to see lists of how many things I got yeah. and shit. Like, uh, I love in Spyro how there's the whole gems thing in Spyro. Mm -hmm. The That's great. I like when there's a finite amount of a thing in a level, and you yeah. can collect all of it if you want to, or you can just not. You know. That's why I uh, I always enjoyed the 
the blue coins in Mario Sunshine. Yeah, those are really good. It's just another layer of shit to get. It is weird that these don't open the doors that they're over. It is very strange. I don't, I'm not actually super sure how I open the doors. I'm playing this one sort of blind, but for the later levels I'm gonna probably practice beforehand just so that mm -hmm. I don't get fucking lost for 45 minutes. Yeah. Because you definitely can do that. I played this game through about two years ago. So, um, I'm not going in it completely. You know, it's not like, oh, I just came right out of 1998 or whatever when I was three years old. <laughs> 1999 it came out. Um, when I was still three years old, probably. Maybe four. Well, it was, uh, it was in the end of 99. Right, so I was four. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, now we can switch Kongs, which is Hell the main yeah. mechanic of this game. So I can become Diddy Kong. Become. I can become Diddy Kong. Donkey and now, Kong turns into Diddy Kong. All, all of the red items I can collect. So uh, I'm gonna collect all the red items. So there's, you know, lovely bananas and stuff, and there's some coins. You know, you gotta have your stuff. So yeah, so now we we rescued Diddy, all that stuff, all those doors open. So I guess they kind of opened the doors, but in a weird sort of uh, separated way. Yeah. So now you can explore the the larger part of the level. It's a very indirect way of getting those doors open by pressing the buttons. Yeah, you had to collect a banana. The banana was mechanically connected to the doors. Yeah, and you can only do it as a certain kind of Kong, and then, enable to get that Kong, you had to hit the buttons. So in a way, the buttons do open. Alright. So here's these fuckers. That drop the blueprints. Oh, yeah. Remember those from, like, two minutes ago? Yeah, I got one. So yeah, the blueprints. So every blueprint you get gives you a golden banana, like afterwards. Uh, how do I get out? Okay. But I thought the red bananas were peppers at first. <laughs> they could be, couldn't they? But unfortunately, they're not. It, yeah, they'd be good if they were like. But I don't know. I think if there were different fruits for each. One, it would step on the other fruit mechanic in the game, which is the ammo. So each Kong has a different kind of ammo, which is a different kind of fruit. Or vegetable. Or whatever. <laughs> or peanut, in Diddy's case. Oh, is he a peanut man? He's a peanut man. His okay. peanut guns can shoot real high. <laughs> Can't remember how it goes. <laughs> He has a gun. It isn't funny. Right here. <laughs> yeah, so now we're in this rainy area of the game that kind of lags quite a bit. And also the Kong oh, barrels are backwards in the way that they work, <laughs> kind of. So it's I always get confused. It's kind of akin to, to Donkey Kong Country at the snow levels where you have the massive snowfall that the Super Nintendo was not built for at yeah. all. Yeah. No, you had to have like a thing on the screen. Yeah, not great. Right, let's just get those bananas out of the way. I'm probably doing this all in like a fucked up order, but anyway. Well, how, is there like a preferred order to do everything? In well, this game? yeah, there is, but like. 
I don't know it off by heart, so I'm just going to do things as I remember that they exist. We're probably going to do about a bit of this level today. And it's all going to be new to me either way, so... Yes. Whenever you get sick of it, just let me know, because we could probably go on for like fucking quite a long time. It's a long game. It's as a long I game. Let's see, let me look at howlongtobeat.com. Oh, is that a real website? That's cool. Yeah, they have users submitted how long on average, and they have like just the story, they have the completionist, and then they have the average of those. Right. Cool. The average out for this one is 33 hours. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I believe it. But yeah, it is. So yeah, it's pretty long. It's quite a lot. All right, so you just got another potion from Cranky for Donkey Kong. These beavers are fucking huge. Yeah, they're huge. I don't know why they're big in this part of the level exclusively. Yeah, they're like they're usually little tiny ones. Okay, so you remember Donkey Kong Country? We're gonna do some. We're gonna see an old friend. You ready to uh -oh. see an old friend? Yeah. I think I know who you might be referring to. Yeah. He kind of looks like the guy on that box. His name is Rhino. GT4. <laughs> I don't know what his name is, I did used to. Do you know what it is or did you forget? Uh no, I wanna I wanna make sure I actually know who you're talking about first. Right. Let me see. Man on the box. Oh, I don't remember these fucking dudes' names. Yeah. The animal buddies. Yeah. Animal man. Let's see. Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, you see if you can find out. Find it out online. Called. Oh my! There are so many people in this in these games. His name is Rambi. Yes, that's correct. He's an Indian rhinoceros, specifically. I didn't know they got that Ooh, specific. That's. Very specific. I like it. There's also uh, <coughs> on guard is the swordfish. On guard fish. is the swordfish. Who we'll see later. And I uh, think that's it. I don't think there's anyone else unless I'm missing. No, someone. there's a couple. Oh no, no, I mean in the in Donkey Kong 64. Like I don't. No, think there's that's... a couple. There's a couple other ones in this. Oh game. really? Yeah. There's uh, there's Squawks the parrot. Oh yeah, but you don't get to be Squawks the Parrot. Oh, okay. I didn't pay attention to what. Oh, you don't get thing. to be Espresso the Ostrich? In this? No. I guess they thought two animal buddies was just enough. What if there were types of bananas or whatever that were specific to the buddies and not just the cons as well? That'd be... Just for an added layer of shit. That would be fucking an added layer of shit. I didn't pay attention to where the thing that opens is, so I'm just wasted a little <laughs> fucking that time. That would certainly be more. So yeah, just ignore this whole section of the video where there's a timer going, because I didn't know what it opened, because I was too busy paying attention to Tim. Oh, sorry. Sorry. You're more interesting than a donkey Diddy Kong. Oh yeah, we can open that with the... Ramby the rhinoceros. I forgot about the Ramby door. Such a terrible name. It's quite a bad name. Alright, let's see if we can pay attention this time. That's a lanky pad. Where's the Diddy Kong one? Here we go. Alright. All eyes on screen. It's there, okay. Oh, 
it's there. Yeah. Well, that's what it was originally. It was originally it's there, maybe. Unless that's one of those fucking urban myths. But Sean Ryder has a stupid Man Manchester accent. Yeah. Fucking stupid Manchester men. That's so uh, it just sounds like duh. Yeah, and then that's it just always changed a fun it. song. It's funny. That's a great song. I want that played up in my funeral. I don't really. <laughs> I don't uh, I mostly like um later on in the song when he uh when he underscores the hold it down dare right. uh bit because at the first couple times it's just the 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 high pitched voice singing that yeah and then, then he does like on, the talky adds on. version and I like I like the way he says dare there because he goes dare like just really <laughs> dra like drags it out and is really excited about it. And I just think it's funny. Yeah, and relevant too, because they're gorillas and this is a Donkey Kong game. Yeah, yeah there you go. The I don't know how to. Monkeys in it. What genre is gorillas? Would you say? Well, I'd probably say it was. I don't know. Uh, th th it's usually listed as alternative, which I guess is correct, but is like the stupidest music genre. Yeah. Is alternative just like it's short for alternative rock? Yeah. Which I'm not even sure Gorillaz is anymore. I think they just do their own thing. Yeah, I mean it's not really like uh, mandatory that you no, classify know, but, everything, but but I understand the the want to kind of put your finger on that, and I do as well. Uh, I I don't know like. I don't even really know what sonically how to describe alternative rock most of the time. Yeah, because it's. Because for one thing, it's incredibly broad. It is incredibly broad. It's everything from like. punk. Yeah. To sort of like, shoe games like I've and heard, stuff. And, I, I've yeah. heard people say like. You know, Ben Queller is alternative, <laughs> or like that Weezer, is. but yeah, I mean, like you know, a lot of their stuff is more uh, uh, traditional sounding and like radio friendly sounding than some stuff that Gorillaz has done. Despite Gorillaz right. also being fairly yeah. popular, not like not that Gorillaz is some sort of like out there band that is totally inaccessible to people or anything, they're fairly well-known. Yeah. But, you know what I mean. I know what you mean. It's a very fucky thing. Yeah. That's what you mean. If they ever make, like, a Donkey Kong uh, movie or something, which I think they will, just because I think they will, uh, right. they should have a gorilla song in it. I already hope they don't. Sounds like well, yeah. a disaster waiting to happen. I, I actually think, um, I don't, I don't know why I'm going to bring this conversation up, but I, I think that, you know, there's, there's kind of like a rule now that uh, movie adaptations of video games are terrible. Right. Uh, and I think, I don't think it's impossible to make a good movie adaptation of a video game. In fact, I think some of the video games that have already been adapted into movies could have had good adaptations. Yeah. Um, but I do think that for the most part, Wait. video games are not a good medium to try to make into movies. No, I like, mean, in you the have first to... place. Because a movie is, is just so different from a video game. Yeah, what um, what is nice about a movie is is very different than why people play video games. I think. Yeah, I mean, because the idea of a sort of character in a movie is very different from a character in a video game. Because a character in a video game should do what you want it to do. Like, yeah, it would be really it's really annoying when games add in like fear effects. It's yeah. like, well, I'm moving the joystick. 
I'm not scared mm -hmm. in real life, but my character is like, ugh. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest issues is that in video games, it's not. It's not a, a, you know, like a rule or anything, but it's generally, generally the protagonist is the least interesting part. Right. Of yeah. the whole thing, whereas with a movie, the protagonist is your. I guess a better way to put it is, in the video game, the protagonist is your, like, physical conduit into the story, whereas in a movie, they have to be, like, your intellectual or... Emotional. Uh, yeah, yeah, emotional is probably a better one. Uh, you know, kind of doorway into the world, and, you know, you can't do that if they don't speak or have a personality outside of, you know, being recognized. Yeah. I think that's one of the bigger problems. That's why I'm very wary of, apparently, the idea of a Half-Life movie is still a thing. Yeah, uh, I don't see how that I would just, work at all. I don't think it'll <laughs> a game be very good. Where the, the protagonist doesn't talk and is basically just you getting from one place to the next place. Yeah. <laughs> There's really nothing that you do in the game that's like... I, I yeah, I, I actually don't think that most video games that are particularly story-driven either should be, like, more considered for film adaptations than games that aren't. Because a video game that is story-driven has a story crafted for a video game for you to play it for many hours and, you know, stuff like that. And when you condense it into a two-hour movie, you're inevitably going to lose a lot. Mm. And you, uh, as well as missing the interactive part of it, which is kind of the whole appeal of video games in general. That's why, uh, you know, uh, romantically, like, I get the idea of wanting like a GTA or a Red Dead Redemption movie because the characters are interesting. Yeah. Like it, ha it, it kind of gets rid of the protagonist problem because the characters are interesting and the stories are, are decent. But I think the two main problems with those kinds of games specifically are one, when you take away the interactive element, element the, the appeal of GTA games is that you're essentially playing through a pretty generic, like, crime gangster or mafia movie. So if you get rid of that, it's just a generic crime right. gangster or mafia movie. And then, you know, to that same end, the other issue is most people's favorite part of GTA is that it's an open-world game that you can explore and do stuff, you know, the story isn't really what most people are interested in. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. I don't know, I've been like, rambling quite a bit, I don't yeah. know if you've, like, had things to say about no, the game I, I, in the last I, I, couple I, minutes or anything. I mean, I think it's very interesting what we're talking about, but yeah, maybe it's not Donkey Kong. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, point is, they shouldn't make a Donkey Kong movie either. Uh, uh, I think, uh, actually, I think maybe, as I say, as you say, they could do it right. And yeah, you know, I there's, could see it there's plenty of cool that... characters in the Donkey Kong yeah, universe. Yeah, you could you could, uh, you could get to the spirit of it for sure with the movie. Yeah, I mean uh. you just have because you have these strong characters, and you could have you know something for them to do that's important. Like, oh, we're yeah, gonna you stop have, King uh, K. Wool, he's gonna destroy the world, or whatever. Just a fairly, like, straightforward, yeah, just like a slapstick movie. Yeah, you know, like a straightforward, sort of children's y movie. Mm hmm. With the Donkey but, Kong characters. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to make a good video game movie, you have to take the, the sort of creative source material and, yeah, and, you know, adapt it properly into a movie. Yeah. And I think the biggest issue is that whoever would actually, you know, go ahead with wanting to make a Donkey Kong movie wouldn't be a purist Donkey Kong fan. It would be, you know, a person who wants to make money. Right. <laughs> so, you know, that whole...
part of it would kind of go away. Yeah, it'd be some small studio. It's like Nintendo asked us to make a movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I just hit a switch there with my peanut gun that makes a wooden plank <laughs> appear. I don't know why I thought you were gonna say penis. <laughs> Yeah, you better you better get that out of your head real quick because there's a lot of peanut gun action. <laughs> but yeah, it makes this Diddy plank Kong, appear, and Diddy uh, Kong pokes a button with it's incredibly penis. annoying to navigate across this plank. Of course, I do it first time because I'm a pro, but mm -hmm. you have to move in a straight line, which I suppose is probably more easy on a Maco pad than it is on a N64 oh, controller. N64 so. Controlling. Yeah, I'll deal with that. I'll accept it. Um, I can't remember if there's anything else in this room, or whether I'm just going to be wasting my time. There's a banana coin there. Oh yeah, look, there's more this way. Good job I didn't go out immediately. That would have been banal. Yeah, this, there's this whole section. Which is what I really like about this game, because while this is the same, you know, this is you wouldn't believe it, but this is the same level that we've been playing the whole time. Oh yeah. And uh, uh, you know, I would there's there's just a lot of play. there's a lot of variety in the game. Hmm. It's very fun. Here comes another annoying bit. I feel like uh, I feel like I'm used to rare games having very big levels. Yeah. Totally, but I mean, this trumps anything. I mean, I'm pretty sure even Jungle Japes is bigger than any Banjo Kazooie level. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure if that's correct. I think Banjo Tooie might Banjo Tooie. Might rival it yeah, they were on. In some areas. They, you know, they'd got the crack by then. Yeah. It's not necessarily a good thing that the levels are big, but it does have some good, you know. There are parts it's of at that least game that are really nice. What, Tui or Kazooie? Oh, both. Both, yeah. So here's another nasty bit. You have to walk up these conveyor belts, but they have a little gap at the side that you can fall down, which is pain. Mm -hmm. And you go really slow up them, so like but then you have to jump, which is so when you jump, you go at normal speed. Oh, yeah. And I didn't do the thing that you need to do, I don't think. But I did just fall through the wall. I'm not. Oh, yeah, you have to hit the switch first. I'm stupid. Yeah, I'm gonna throw an orange at this man first. This part does look tricky. Is there no fall damage in this game? Uh, yeah, there is fall damage, but you can fall pretty far. Mm -hmm. I mean, you right, know what they say go. about monkeys, they always so, yeah, never mind. fall on their... I am a fool. <laughs> I forgot about that you had to flick the switch first. But now it will become... Now I can actually go in. It's still annoying though. I think they're still, I mean, they're still moving backwards. Not as fast as they were before. But now we can jump in this little hole. Let's see these big, fat, pink fuckers have made a, a return. Uh, yeah, they've made a return. Squawk, listen up, Diddy. So here's the minecart section, which is... All right. The minecart sections in this game are really fun. I gotta say, they did a good job. I'm uh, bad. There, there weren't that many in in country. There were only like three. Yeah. There, there aren't too many in this. I think there's, there might be one in every level. There might not be... It might not be quite that many. I think there's not one in Angry Aztec, because there's a 
mini game that's quite a lot like it. Mm -hmm. But the levels are really good. Basically, the format is you have to collect these coins. If you don't collect enough coins, you have to do it again. And if you get hit, you lose some coins. This is uh, really surprisingly like dynamic and. Fluid. Oh yeah, it look. I mean, Organ it's amazing. I still think these bits are really impressive. Mm -hmm. Like, and all the the like the lighting changes and stuff yeah. is really impressive for the N64. I mean, it looks like sort of a haunted house ride or something, right? Yeah. I think that's the inspiration. And they did a good job. So yeah, you can hit levers, and you weren't supposed to hit that one because there's less coins on that side. And you weren't supposed to hit that one either because there are less coins on that side, so I guess I fucked up twice. But it's alright because I had enough coins. But yeah, they get a lot harder than that, which is good because it's not—it's not horrible hard. It's you know fun hard. Yeah. No, it looks like a—it's it a, like it's a, a bit of a blast. We so, got a golden banana for it. We got a golden banana for it. Is what you just said for mm -hmm. those who didn't hear. Yeah. So we can go up and get the other banana that we got be unlocked before. That's on that twirly platform. We got these slopes. Yeah, the minecart sections are fun. As fuck. Dude. <laughs> okay, so now we, here I am. I'm gonna try and remember all the rest of the shit. So yeah. the blueprints do count as bananas, I believe, I think. In the level. Wait, no, I don't think they do actually. Never mind, I'm just thinking to myself. Trying to remember how bullshit this game is. If there's that I think yeah, no. I'm stupid, I'm lying, sorry. Fucking hang me on the neck and sue me. <laughs> I'm dangerous. I'm a raptor. Uh, what am I doing? I'm a freezer. Oh yeah, there's a bit over here which we can unlock with our <laughs> penis. <laughs> One good thing about this game is it doesn't have lives, so you can die as much as you want. It doesn't really matter. If only you could die as much as you want in real life. I know. Which would be all the time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it would be it would be neat to be able to die and you know. And come able, back, you know, yeah. Come back if you didn't like it. I think I would enjoy being dead, but I don't want to die just yet. I don't want to die forever yet. Oh, sometimes I just want to be out of of life for a little bit. I mean, in this hypothetical situation, though, where do you go? Like, I don't know, just somewhere else for a bit. Is it the club? <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, it's like it's why it's one of many reasons why I enjoy sleeping because I get to pretend that I'm not alive. <laughs> I, I really like sleeping for the same. Because. Reason. Not because, you know, for the meme reason of like, oh, haha, ha, dead, but, you know, or like, I want to die, hell, ha, 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 but, you know, it's, yeah, it's for the reason I, of like, I... life is sometimes overwhelming and annoying, and I, I want to, like, even when you distract yourself and like, get yourself away from stuff, you're never away from it, there's no. like, parts of... You know, I still have to eventually pay whatever bill I'm not wanting to do. Yeah. Or whatever. whatever. Yeah. And, you know, it would just be neat if there was a place that you could go where that's not happening. Uh, but uh, the only place well, you do that is being this, dead. Or, or Cheers. <laughs> or asleep. Well, yeah. Well, no, because even the people in Cheers, they had, you know. Yeah, I know. They knew that they Sorry. were going to. 
they were gonna come back to this stuff. They just went there to be somewhere where everyone knew their name. Cause yeah. Apparently that was yeah, a big deal. For it was them. a big deal. Uh, Norm Peterson comes in. And they yeah, went, I, Norm. Can, I can deal with fucking all the hardships of life, I, but not enough people know my name. Not enough people know my name, Sam Malone. I just need. I just um, need more people to know me. Yeah, but I really enjoyed the. I really enjoyed the dream. The dreams. I've been They're having really some good. whack ass dreams lately. Oh yeah. Um, and I don't know why I have this thing where every few months I just have like a two week long period of time where I just have really bizarre but very like feasible dreams. Right. And uh, they always get at some like very uh, subtle like insecurity or or anxiety I have. It's never about something that's actually relevant. Yeah. I understand that. But then, you know, most of the time I, my dreams are just... You know, oh, I'm ice cream. My, yeah. tends, my dreams tend to be dreams about, like, there's some rule or something I've got to do, but I never actually get to do it. Or, yeah. like, I'm trying to do something, but, like, the rule keeps coming up and I have to, like get back to that. Yeah. Like, there are things that are important in dreams that are just, like, completely made up. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, like, think of an example, but I never remember them very well. It's hard I to... sort of remember them conceptually. Maybe I should write them down. A dream journal. Apparently that's, like, really good to do. I think, I think you're right. But I... I don't know. I might... I might, I might do a blog. Yeah. I wouldn't want to publicize it. Though. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to publicize all of them. Like some of them I could, yeah, I could write some of them. Like. I could write them all down and then publicize, like, some of them. It'd be pretty because interesting. Because, you know, the cool but scary thing about dreams is that you don't get to choose what's in them. Yeah, the exactly. Part. It's. I mean, there's lucid dreaming, but that takes, like, practice and stuff. It does. But for the most part, it's pretty much just whatever your actual brain is. Sure. Yeah, I actually managed to do that once a little while ago. A little while yeah. ago, I mean like maybe a month or so. Yeah, a bit longer than that, that, actually. It was pretty good. So it wasn't proper lucid dreams, but I was aware that I was in control of it. Which I suppose is I what it is. I would like to do it. I've, I've read up on, you know what you have to do. Because what I, I did, I know it's a cliche, and I always think that this is a cliche, I flew. I was thinking oh, when, yeah. when people say, like, what well, your favorite superpower would be, and they're like, I would like to fly. And it's yeah. like, you know, it's your imagination. But as a sort of, like, instant thing, flying is yeah. pretty good, actually. Yeah. It was... The whole dream was in this weird setting. I was like in a school, mm -hmm. which is where a lot of my dreams are. Mm -hmm. I wonder why that is scarred for life. Um, but it was also like a film where I had to like impress the girl. Oh, okay. Um, but I realized in it I was in a dream and like we went outside by this wall. And I was like, I'm gonna show you that this is a this is a dream, and we can do something. I don't know. And so you flew. And so yeah, so I stood, I was standing on the wall, and I ran on the wall over to the end of the wall and jumped, and I did it. Oh wow! So there you go, interesting dream thing. Oh, congratulations on flying. I know. Uh, Congratulations on flying in your fucking dream. I hate this. Yeah, I was, uh, when I was reading about lucid dreaming, the guy who was talking about it described the first time he lucid dreamt. And, uh, the thing he did in it was kind of neat. He said, when I realized that I had control over the dream, what I did was I, in the dream, I had a pencil. Right. And I just started drawing, like, on the air. And I, I drew a door in front of me. 
and uh, like it was scribble mods or something. Yeah. Where, and I, I don't know. I thought the idea of that was kind of neat. That's it's it's weird because that always seems to happen in cartoons um, and stuff. Like the yeah. drawing the door with the pencil, and I always think it's strange, but I guess that's like a thing. I suppose like a pencil is just sort of the arm of creation, particularly for people working in animation. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I also, uh, one type of dream that I have really often uh, is... Because it's a, it's a weird insecurity I have, or a weird fear that I have. I always have dreams where I've done something wrong and I have no idea what I did. <laughs> because that's it happens to me sometimes, and I hate it. And it's like one of my least favorite feelings, and I just dread it all the time. Right. Uh, where, you know, people are angry at me, and I legitimately don't know what I did wrong. Uh, so there's a lot of that in dreams. Just substituting actual stuff with arbitrary dream rules of, you know... Uh, yeah, you, like, it's yeah. that same kind of thing, like, oh, you put the lemon on the bench, you weren't supposed yeah, to Yeah, it's some dumb shit that makes no sense. But I did it, and now everyone's pissed, and I'm like, what? Alright, so that was the first boss. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have, we're not really... I, I'm not gonna try and talk about the game if we're talking about something interesting. Like, dreams and shit. I mean, but, you can look at the game, uh, yeah, too, in the video. I mean, I'm playing the game. It's an armadillo, he had shit on him. And I mean, him. if you're watching this video, then you probably know. So we leave Hall and Oates realm now, or whatever, like, Truff and Scoff. <laughs> um, those are the two guys that you have to feed, but you have to feed Scoff and then Trough it turns the key mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing for Donkey in here so don't mind this go. I actually went in there because I thought there was something for Donkey in here but it wasn't a coconut, it was actually a fella so I have a, I have a friend in Philly face. who tried to convince me that his father was uh, John Oates oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Donkey Kong uh, yeah, he's not. <laughs> no. Was, what is his surname, Oates? Or something? Uh, no. Right. Which, why I didn't... I didn't <laughs> that, that's usually, like, the first... That's, like, the first Yeah, check. it was a pretty big indicator. But his name is something. I forget his name. But I didn't know his, his last name. And he goes, I, I, uh, we were sitting around in his apartment, and I brought up Hall and Oates for some reason. Right. Um, I think it's because we were talking about, someone was talking about a Simon and Garfunkel song. Right. But they said Garfunkel and Oates. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Duo. Easy mistake to make. Yeah, and I said, you're either talking about Simon and Garfunkel or Hall and Oates. And they were like, oh shit. And then... Liar says, uh, oh, My dad's oh, Hall and Oates. My dad is Oates. And I was like, right. Huh? He was like, Yeah, my dad is Oates of Hall and Oates. My, my, dad is, like, my dad is John Oates. He didn't say Did John Oates. He say John Oates, Oates, so he didn't even know his actual name. Yeah, he said yeah. Oates. And I was like, Yeah, I forget his first name. And he goes, Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I forgot my dad's first name. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think you're telling the truth. And I was like, what's your last name? And it was like Hamish or something. Right. And uh, and I was like, and he was like, no, that's John Oates's uh, that's John Oates's like other name. Right. His, his other name, you know. I don't for, know if he for was weekends. a very bad liar or he just has horrible confusion about who his father is. Yeah, like his mum told him that his father was John Oates before he ran away. Well, so obviously to soften the he blow. didn't have a very close relationship with his dad since he didn't even know yeah. his fucking name. Cause he... <laughs> yeah. No, fucking strange. Yeah, I don't know what he was trying to do. And what a weird way to impress me. Also. Yeah, I know. In like a way that's... All the musicians. 
fucking John Oates. Not to badmouth John Oates, I mean, no, I, I mean, like he's Paul great. Oates, but, you know, it was weird. I, uh, uh, look at like them too. They're, they're in my head recently because the, the song Rich Girl mm -hmm. was in my head because I heard a cover of it and then I heard it like the actual version in a club and then oh, I was yeah? like, oh in wow. In a club? It wasn't, a, it was more of a bar I guess. Okay, I was sort of say they one of those Rich halfway between. Club? It wasn't like a, you know, like a club club. How do I fucking win this shit? A, B. That's a very weird club. Alright, everybody, we're gonna turn up to Hall and Oats. Alright. No. I mean, not that you can. No, you, you can definitely. I've, I've certainly turned up to Hall and Oats. Before. You can turn up to Hall and Oats, but the problem is the beats just can't compete anymore. Like, the beats are getting so big. No, you, know? you need a pulsating earth-shattering beat in a club. Like, honestly, like, the beats in the 80s are just sort of nothing compared to the beats these days. Well, because we have, like, electronic, like, manufactured bass. Oh, know, yeah. Or the, the beat was just from the from the kick drum, mostly. The, that was, like, the lowest noise you got that constituted the beat of the song. Yeah, but now you get these, like, 20 hertz. I mean, they, they had, like, synths in the 80s, obviously, but... But, you know, whatever. Nothing against beats, you know, plenty of songs from now that I no, like No, I'd say nothing against the beat. It's just that, uh, yeah, as I say, the, the beats have gotten very large. Pushed out the likes of Hall & Oates. In those uh, in areas. those circles, yeah. Which is unfortunate, cause makes me wonder if they like do come back and do more, do some like modern. Yeah, Hall and Oates drop Hall a, Oates do a like trap, a trap album, trap album out of nowhere. Yeah. What would uh, what would they would they rename themselves or would they just be Hall? And no, Oates they'd still? be Hall and Oates still. <laughs> All I know it's new album. Uh, bitches in the floor. <laughs> <laughs> bitches in the floor. Yeah, That's they're like in a, it. The bitches in the floor is like if Edgar Allan Poe made a trap album. <laughs> yeah, they're like they've been like cemented in, and yeah. like. they just have to be subjected to being like trampled on all the time, and it's a metaphor about the club lifestyle or something. Everybody stomp your feet. Annoy the bitches in the floor. <laughs> can't do it because they're dead. Well, they're not dead. They can't die. That's the problem. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. It's Edgar Allan Poe here. Yeah. Or well, maybe that's what's making the beat. It's the bitches in the floor yeah, that they're are just... beating on the ground. Yeah, beating on the ground. That's pretty morbid, though. It's very morbid. But, I don't know. Rap has all kinds of shit like that. That's, like, kind of disturbing, but to get, it gets the point across. I mean, you have that, um, got that silly song Broccoli, um, where, uh, Lil Yachty says, uh, Touch my gang will turn this shit to Columbine. Right. And like this is, it's supposed to be like a very whimsical song, and in the context of the song, it's like ah oh, ha, ha. But when you think about it, you're like, oh, Columbine like, was oh, a yeah, fucking terrible. Oh yeah, that's where all those children died. Yeah, that was the <laughs> <laughs> the cold-blooded murder of twelve teenagers, <laughs> and we're just throwing it out. Yeah, you know, gotta have it. And Lil Yachty's not very far removed, he's like 20. He's 20. <laughs> I really like how all new rappers now are all like... 5, 6, and have terrible hair, and really dumb names. Yeah. Um, Tim. Yes. Uh, do you want to carry on? Because I want to go to the bathroom for a minute.
Which is... Uh, we can stop here. We've been going for a yeah, okay. while. And I'm, I'm assuming we finished okay. the... Uh, yeah, well, we finished the level for now. We obviously have to come back and collect all of the other shit. Yeah. That's in there. Yeah, no, we can, uh, we can stop for today, I think. But yeah, there's a lot to do. So, yeah, thanks for watching. If you have been. Uh, which you have. Um. Check out my... Check out my videos. Check out Tim's <laughs> videos, too. <laughs> uh, Donkey, any any last words before I fucking kill you? No. <laughs> Alright, well, Donkey Kong. Yeah.